Greetings to all of you. I'm recording this on July 14th, the day before we experience the exact conjunction of Uranus and Mars. And I want to talk more about that, the energy of that conjunction. I talked some about it in my new moon video, but I want to talk about it in more depth today and also talk about how that evolves into our upcoming full moon on July 21st. As I'm recording this video, there's been a recent event yesterday here in the United States, another violent event. And the violence in this country has been increasing exponentially in recent years. And the tumult is accelerating around the globe. We all feel that and know that. And yet it is important to see these events and this reactivity and violence and these outbreaks in the context of the larger energies that are unfolding in this time. As I talked about in my patron discussion group yesterday, it is critical for all of us. We were sharing together how important it is to stay centered and in alignment with our hearts and our soul selves in the midst of the turbulence of this time. I truly believe as we're experiencing this time where Pluto has been shifting back and forth between Capricorn and Aquarius, it will go back into Capricorn September through November 20th and then move fully into Aquarius after that. But in this movement back and forth, Pluto is guiding us in how this is a time of transformation of our systems and structures, socially, politically, economically, in every sense. And it's also a time for us to go through this death rebirth of these out of balanced paradigms of the past in order to move in to the new paradigms of the Aquarian age. As you know, my view of astrology is not that it's predictive or deterministic. I don't look at these transits or these planetary energies as indicating to us what will happen in our external environment, what will occur in our world. I truly believe that these energies of the stars and planets are the language of the consciousness of the cosmos. That when we learn to listen to that language, to the energies and archetypal meanings of the stars and planets and their patterns and how they're guiding us, then we can align our consciousness with the consciousness of the cosmos. And then the effects, the outcome of those energies are our co-creation with cosmic consciousness. Again, this is such a critical time as we're shifting into the age of Aquarius to remember that everything is energy and everything is interconnected. So these events aren't happening outside of us or to us. Everything in the collective consciousness is an expression of our own inner reality and what we're each contributing to that collective consciousness around the globe. So as we heal, as we move into higher consciousness, as we align with our soul selves and with the consciousness of the cosmos, then we affect what is manifesting in our world, not only in our global events and what is unfolding in our experience as humanity, but we have that capacity to, with the earth, move through this time of transition into a new world. We can shape how this transition, this death of the age of Pisces into the birth of the age of Aquarius, unfolds. So let's listen to these energies of this conjunction with Uranus 
and Mars and the energies of this upcoming full moon to be very choiceful about how we work with these energies to be emanating and aligning with the highest conscious expression of these energies. So let's look at the chart for this conjunction, and then we'll talk about the full moon. So here on the east coast of the United States, this conjunction between Uranus and Mars will be exact at 26 degrees of Taurus on July 15th at 9.50 a.m. Because we feel these energies as we are in a within at least a five degree orb, we've been feeling this energy of this conjunction increasing and now it's coming into its full fruition on July 15th. And then it will continue to be in a five degree orb. So if you give this conjunction a five degree orb, then it's most intense and most active between July 8th and 23rd. And remember, as I said in the new moon video, the meaning of the 20 sixth degree of Taurus in the Sabian symbols is how do we come into calm wisdom and maturity in our relationships to be showing respect for others' ways of being and doing. So this conjunction with Uranus and Mars at the highest level of consciousness is guiding us with Uranus to see the truth, to set ourselves free from reactive, out-of-balance ways of acting, Mars, or expressing our will, to come into alignment with this level of wisdom and maturity in how we act and interact with others in the world. But again, if we're not working this at a higher level of consciousness, this can be heightened reactivity. It can trigger impulsive or reactive actions. It can be about earth changes that are coming in relationship to the turmoil of the energy that we as humanity are putting out in the collective. Our inner and outer realities mirror each other. How things play out in the world is related to our inner world and how we are in peace, in wisdom, in love, in alignment within ourselves, or in tumult, reactivity, anger, fear, trauma within ourselves, then that will manifest outside of ourselves. So this is what's critical in this time is that we each take responsibility for our own healing and our own consciousness such that we are clear in what we are emanating in our own lives and into the collective consciousness. It's also significant that this conjunction is in sextile with Neptune and also in a trine with Pluto. So we've got all three of these outermost transpersonal planets involved in this powerful conjunction. And I'll talk more in a moment about this Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces that is also very active in this upcoming full moon. But remember that Neptune in Pisces is about how are we expanding in our spiritual consciousness and realization that we are a part of the oneness of all that is, so that we are coming from a place of compassion, a place of love. And Neptune is that higher octave of Venus. How are we aligning with the love and wisdom of the cosmos? Pluto, at one degree of Aquarius, is guiding us with Uranus to step more into truth, justice, new forms of social interaction and systems that are expressing that energy, Aquarian energy of collaboration, 
cooperation, the way in which we are not giving our power away or in conflict with each other, but are in community, in collaboration, and in mutual respect with each other. But again, if not worked consciously, that Pluto energy, which is about transformation and power, can actually fuel more reactivity, anger, acting out, violence. So these energies can manifest in different ways depending on our level of consciousness and the choices that we make. So together in this community, may we continue to support each other to hold that energy of love and higher consciousness to be very clear in how we are working with these very powerful energies in this critical time of trans transition and transformation. And now let's see how this unfolds as we move into the full moon. So as we come to the full moon on July 21st, we have the sun at 29 degrees of Cancer opposite the moon at 29 degrees of Capricorn. And Uranus is still at 26 degrees of Taurus, but Mars has now moved into Gemini. This is still within a five degree orb, but I do believe it will shift the energies of how Mars can manifest. And now this energy of Mars that relates to our will and how we assert and express ourselves may manifest more fully in our communication, in our words, in our ideas, in how we are interacting with each other. This conjunction is still in a trine with Pluto and still in a sextile with Neptune. And it's significant in this full moon that Neptune is at nine, 29 degrees of Pisces and the sun and moon are at the 29th degree. 29 degrees of Cancer for the sun, 29 degrees of Capricorn for the moon. The 29th degree is called the anoretic degree and has often been seen in certain uh, forms of traditional astrology as somehow in debilitation or a degree that has to do with ambivalence or indecision. Again, because I think how we work with these energies influences how they manifest. To me, the significance of the 29th degree is it's the transitional degree. It is shifting from one sign to the next, from one energy and archetype into another. So I actually see the 29th degree as a shamanic degree. It's in that liminal state. It's between the worlds, between the energies, in this case of Pisces and Aries with Neptune. So it's supporting us in looking at how we're integrating the energies of that sign that planet has been journeying through in preparation for this transition into its expression in a new energy, in a new sign. So it, for me, it's like that final phase in the lunar cycle where we're in the dark of the moon and in that liminal time of integrating what's been learned in this past cycle in preparation for a movement into a new energy, a new cycle. So Neptune at the 29th degree of Pisces is calling us into integrating how we're working with that energy of Pisces. Are we opening to that expanded spiritual consciousness? Are we opening to more compassion? Are we remembering that we are a part of the oneness of all that is? Pisces? Are we opening to the wisdom of the waters and the consciousness of the water that Veda Austin and others guide us in understanding? And her new book has just come out. So I encourage you to check into that. Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces is 
also supporting us in integrating our reflections on this journey through the age of Pisces and how then we can move into Aries, into how we act and express ourselves and form our own sense of identity, Aries, in a new way. And remember that the North Node at nine degrees of Aries, which is where it is at the time of that exact Uranus-Mars conjunction, and it's still at nine degrees of Aries at the time of this full moon. The Sabian symbol is about the importance of our visionary concentration of attention. So how are we focusing our attention and our sense of our identity to be formulating these new ways of being in the world, Aries? And are we integrating the compassion, higher consciousness, remembrance of our being a part of the sea of cosmic consciousness that Neptune is guiding us in? And Neptune is at 29 degrees of Pisces from May to August. It's holding that energy to support us in integrating this, in working with this understanding of this Piscean energy. And it's in a prominent role in this full moon in that it's exactly sextiling the moon, trining the sun. And now both the sun and moon are, are at that 29th degree and I believe that the, the energy of this liminal degree at the time of this full moon is saying we are individually and collectively in this liminal time of profound transformation. We're not only in this time where these planetary energies are moving from one sign to another, but we are collectively moving from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. And Pluto now at zero degrees of Aquarius is in a tight conjunction with the moon in opposition with the sun. This is a liminal time of transition and profound transformation. And it's very significant that this full moon is in a T-square with Aristina and Chiron time to heal in order to move into new forms, Arizona, to be on our own individual and collective creative path that is a path of healing and a path of higher consciousness and not a path that's coming out of our woundedness. Remember, Chiron is symbolic of our wounds from the past, but also how when we heal those wounds, we step into our healing gifts. So we are able to express ourselves, Aries, and that Aries energy of Mars in a more healing, creative, innovative way with this conjunction if we take the time to heal what's out of balance within ourselves in order to be moving into these new ways of being in order to co-create a new world together. These energies are so symbolic of how if we don't work our trauma individually or collectively, we will continue to act it out and perpetuate this lineage of trauma that we've been in on the planet, particularly these past 5,000 years. We will perpetuate that in a way that will continue the wounding and suffering of humanity and our destructiveness in relationship with ourselves and our planet. But we have a choice now. Pluto is empowering us to be clear that this is a time of transformation, doing the healing that we need to do, to be energizing new ways of being that are characterized by compassion, by coming from the heart, by emanating healing energy in the world, by right al alignment with the truth, with justice, and with how we act and communicate in the world and with each other. 
the meaning of the Sabian symbol of 29 degrees of Capricorn. I'm going to read you two different versions of this. One James Burgess, one more uh, tightly a translation of Rudyard's work, and I'll put those references below. But the meaning of the Sabian symbol is that we can come to realize that true mastery involves the need for spiritual wisdom at the highest level of the management of our collective affairs. We are in this profound time on the planet. 60 elections are taking place in countries around the world. We're in this time of political turmoil and political change, global unrest, economic instability, the systems and structures of our society and our collective global community are all in flux in change as we experience this Pluto movement back and forth between Capricorn and Aquarius. And the energies of this full moon are helping us realize we're in this liminal transition time and how we work that affects how this transition unfolds. And we are called into that awareness that we need to bring that maturity, that maturity and wisdom of Uranus and Mars guiding us in being conscious of how we act and to not get caught in reactivity into how we interact with each other and how we bring that wisdom into the choices that are made in our collective and in how we are influencing the collective consciousness. We need to not give our power away and seek for those who are in positions of leadership politically or economically to make this world a better place. We need to take responsibility for our own choices and how we are empowering these new paradigms in the collective or getting mired in the turbulence of this transition time and in the turbulence with the polarization at work on the planet with those who are clinging to the old paradigms. Another way to understand this 29th degree of Capricorn is that we are responsible for our decisions that influence our world. So are we coming from compassion, cancer? Are we coming from that higher spiritual consciousness and that love and wisdom of the cosmos, Neptune? Are we coming from a place of truth and honoring justice and the natural law of the earth, Taurus, the way the earth herself is trying to guide us to wake up, to look at our actions, and to make choices that are in alignment with the Aquarian paradigms that we're moving into, that are about balance, harmony, right relationship, justice, collaboration, community. So the energies of this full moon are so powerfully bringing the focus to this critical choice point that we're in. And there are so many other energies that are active in this full moon. We have the trine with Saturn. We have the way in which Uranus is sextiling the sun, trining the moon. We can look at the other Kuiper Belt objects and asteroids involved, and we also see that Pallas Athene is trining the sun, sextiling the moon. We also see that Haumea is squaring both of them in an out-of-sign square. We have Mars sextiling the sun, trining the moon. We have Maki Maki conjunct the south node and in aspect of the sun and moon. What does all of this mean? Again, with these Kuiper Belt objects, Maki Maki, Haumea, 
how are we moving into new paradigms that are honoring our relationship with the earth and the ancient wisdom of the indigenous people who remember the meaning of making decisions and choices that are in right harmony with the natural environment, with the resources and the being of the earth herself. I just did a fascinating conversation with Jane Gleason White about how capitalism has evolved in our human history and the value system that undergirds our current global economy, which is about profit maximization. It's taken on this life and energy that's beyond our human choices often and is perpetuating this drivenness for competition, conquest, profit in a way that is actively destroying the resources of the earth and exploiting and abusing communities and our human connections with each other and social well-being. So these Kuiper Belt objects are saying, come back into remembrance of indigenous wisdom, the wisdom of the ancient cultures that understood that we need to come out of a paradigm of disconnection and of separation back into that remembrance that we are part of the earth. We are embodied here and interconnected with all of the life around us. So again, this full moon is saying, honor that you're in this liminal time and be conscious of the choices that you're making. And are you allowing yourself to heal? Are you seeing the truth of natural law and are the consequences of our interactions with each other and with the natural world? And are we coming from a place of compassion and of higher consciousness to be a part of the consciousness of the cosmos in moving into these new forms? And I think it's amazing that the meaning of the Sabian symbol of 29 degrees of Pisces is, is that if we look for our connection with source and allow our consciousness to be aligned with the consciousness of the cosmos, then we become what we visualize. We become what we idealize. So if we align our soul selves with the consciousness and the love and wisdom of the cosmos, that then shapes who we are and what we emanate and what we manifest. Then we become those emissaries of divine love and wisdom of the energies and consciousness of the cosmos in how that impacts everyone around us and emanates into the collective consciousness. We can choose how we work with these energies and what we visualize, what we put our attention on, and how that affects who we become, who we are, what we manifest. Let me now show you where these energies are in the sky at the time of this full moon. As I've talked about before, I really believe that it's very important that as we're moving into these new Aquarian paradigms, that we're coming back to a connection with visual astrology, which is honoring where the sun and moon and planets are actually in the sky at the time of these critical transits and transition times. And it's different than sidereal astrology, which is factoring in procession, but isn't actually looking at where these planetary bodies and luminaries actually are in the sky. So as we look at this visual astrology for this full moon, the moon and Pluto are here in the stars of Sagittarius. 
I believe that visual astrology guides us to understand and attune to the spiritual meaning of these energies coming to us from the planets and stars. And then the tropical zodiac chart gives us a sense of how we can embody them and manifest them here on the earth plane. But with Pluto and the moon in the stars of Sagittarius, remember this is the constellation of the archer with his bow and arrow, and the arrow tip of the arrow of the archer is pointing to the galactic center, our source. So this full moon that is supporting us in looking at what are these energies that we're bringing into our collective consciousness, are they about our alignment with source with the center of our galaxy and are we staying centered in ourselves and in connection with the center of our galaxy our source with pluto and the moon there pluto is saying burn away what's out of balance what's pulling you out of alignment with your own center your heart chakra burn away what's out of alignment with cosmic consciousness with the center of our galaxy so that you are empowered in what you're emanating into the collective consciousness, that it be this manifestation of Aquarian paradigms of justice, collaboration, community, mutual respect, compassion. It's also significant that the conjunction of Uranus and Taurus, I've talked about how Uranus has been moving through the sky in this part of the sky called in the stair of Cetus, but Uranus in its conjunction with Mars is now close to Pleiades here in the stars of Taurus the bull. The Pleiades, I believe, are powerful energies guiding us in our healing and in our transition into this new age. So if we're actually working with the deeper meaning of this Uranus-Mars conjunction, it is about how do we attune to the galactic beings, the energies coming to us from the cosmos that are guiding us in how to move through this transition in a healing way, in a way that we're holding this time consciously to be co-creating a new world together. And Jupiter is in a close proximity to the royal star Aldebaran. How are we aligning our beliefs, Jupiter, and our expression in right integrity, Aldebaran? And how Taurus are we embodying these energies of truth and how we act, Mars, and our faith and our beliefs, Jupiter? How are we embodying them here in our experience on the earth plane to be co-creating this new world together? So this, this is a profound time, a turbulent time, a transition time. And one of the things that came through in my recent conversation with Jane Gleason White and with another conversation I had with Kayoni Hanley that I'll be putting out in a few days, a theme that came through in both of those conversations was the importance of our honoring the sacredness of our own embodiment, Taurus honoring our bodies, our sacred manifestation of the creativity of the cosmic consciousness in who we each uniquely are, as we align with that self-love and that awareness of the sacredness of our embodiment, then it will naturally shape our values and the way in which we uh, align with and understand the sacredness of the earth, of each other, 
of all of life. Then we come back into connection. Then we come back into communion with the earth and sky. We come back into collaboration with each other. We co-create a new sense of community and a new world with each other. In these videos and in the discussion of these powerful transits, you'll notice I don't get caught up in talking about specifics of world events or what's unfolding politically or economically. It's not because I don't pay attention to it or care about it. It's that I don't want to fuel the polarization or be mired in the tumult of this transformational time. And I don't feel like it's helpful for us to get caught in the external turbulence rather than looking at how we stay responsible for our own inner alignment, our own path of consciousness, so that we are empowered to be affecting what's going on all around us in our direct interactions and in how we emanate our energy into the collective. As we can come from our hearts with love, as we can align with our soul selves and the love and wisdom and consciousness of the cosmos, which is guiding us into these Aquarian paradigms, is guiding us back into harmony, back into that remembrance of the music of the spheres, of the sacredness of all of life. As we align with that, and heal and clear whatever blocks us from that, whatever trauma from our past pulls us out of balance, then we can find that joy and peace of being at one with the consciousness and love and wisdom of the cosmos to be emanating that, to be messengers of that, to be supporting that shift in our collective consciousness. May we take responsibility for what we visualize, what we choose. May we each follow that path of healing to open to love and higher consciousness, to be emanating that in the world, to be shaping what manifests in our global community and in our relationship with the earth, our home. Thank you to all of you for how much you support me in my work, how much you share your wisdom and insights and consciousness. Thank you for how we are this web of healing light around the globe, holding that light in times of turbulence and darkness, holding that healing energy and love and compassion to support this transition into the new world and the age of Aquarius. Blessings and love to all of you. Blessed be.